clear. Again, West Ham almost asleep at the back. Line Davis in possession again. Campbell! Oh, what a finish! And the effort finally pays off for Everton. A sweet ball in from Alexanderson. And again, West Ham asleep as Kevin Campbell profits for the Blues. Um, that was our tribute to um, to Kevin Campbell, who um, uh, passed away yesterday. Um, John, I I don't know about you, and I wanted you to talk about your one of maybe of your memories of Kevin Campbell. Um, but if I could start, um, two thousand and one, I think it was the twenty ninth of September. Uh, Everton played West Ham at Goodison Park. It's actually my first game at Goodison Park. Um, we're playing the West Ham side. I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit there and, and say that I remember particularly much. I was nine years old and it was my first game at Goodison. But I, I remember the crossing. I think it's from Alexanderson. You've just seen it. And, and Campbell runs away and scores. And I remember celebrating. I remember Campbell's infectious smile coming up on the screen. Um, he, Kevin Campbell, he, his work ethic, his, his just beautiful personality made me want to be a footballer at nine years old. You know, he, he, he was the one that if, if any young kid out there wants to research former players, research Kevin Campbell because he's the most underrated one of the nicest people I've ever had the pleasure of speaking to, of watching. He, he is genuinely a legend of our game. He is so underappreciated, and my thoughts personally go out to his friends and family who, who, who obviously will be heartbroken, but, but Kevin Campbell leaves this earth um, with the utmost respect, love, gratitude from millions of people all across the UK and the world. Such a lovely, lovely man. Kevin Campbell epitomises what young kids look up to, how they want footballers to be with them. You know, there's footballers out there who don't give fans or anyone the time of day. Kevin Campbell had time for anyone same as you i've spoke to him goodison roads a couple of times you know he'd stop and talk to you he'd talk to anyone nothing was too much for him he's gone too soon and it's the old saying you know gone too soon and kevin campbell has you know and kevin campbell for me also epitomizes the saying where once evidence touched you not the same. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Kevin Campbell was an Everton fan because I think it's widely known he was probably an Arsenal fan. Arsenal was probably the club he'd look for all the time, the results-wise. But he got Everton. And Everton got him. And he got the fans. And the fans got him. When he put that blue shirt on, I'm not going to sit here and say I know his record and how many goals he scored in one season. But Kevin Campbell was brought in initially to do a job for Everton to keep us in the league. And he's single-handedly done that. So, again, 
I, I, I go along with what you say. Sorry for your loss to his friends, his family, but also he's played for West Brom. He's played for Everton Arsenal, not Forest as well. So this just doesn't affect Everton fans. It affects the club he's played for, but it's also, it affects your everyday football fan because, again, he was such a nice fella. And, you know, he had his dicky bow Thursday and he'd always, I think he started it in COVID. He'd, he'd wish everyone a good day on, on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. And that just showed the man for what Kevin Campbell was. So sorely missed. Um, he wasn't well. And I can say this, and I hope people don't take it in the wrong context, but he's not in pain anymore. You know, he, he's out of that now. And his family wouldn't want to see him like that, you know. And for the time he was put on this earth, he he got a lot of admirers. He had a lot of love, not just from his family, but from worldwide fans because Kevin Campbell put himself out there because he was such a nice man. So I'll just end what on this part what I've got to say about Kevin Campbell because yeah it's it's hard for me because as you said before you you were only young when you first started seeing Kevin Campbell whereas I was a bit older probably a lot older so the memories I have, I, I can remember them, you know, and mm. it's it, it's, a, it's a sad loss for, for football in general. And also, again, I'll finish this part on saying our thoughts, Everton, Everton fans all over the world, football fans all over the world, to his family, you're all in our thoughts. Yeah, well said, John. Um... I had a few comments yesterday of people thinking that um, I wasn't going to talk about Kevin Campbell or I wasn't going to mention it on a video. And, and I, I wish people would sometimes understand the context that we have to do with these videos. You know, we we make content and yesterday's video, in my opinion, um, and we will move on to that, but it was not appropriate to talk about Kevin Campbell in that video. It, it was appropriate to sit there with one of my best mates and talk about the experiences that we had, you know, sharing and loving and thinking of Kevin Campbell. It was not right to ask a, a fantastic Italian journalist, don't get me wrong, to have any of the level of compassion that we're ever going to have towards him. So that was the reason why there was no statement from the channel. There was no bits of video. We wanted to do it properly. I wanted John to do it. I've, I've, John has squeezed me in in between all of the jobs he's trying to do today to before he goes on holiday tomorrow, just to, just to give me a little bit of time where I could come and do this video properly the way that it should be done. So John, thank you for coming on and, um, I appreciate it. Obviously, you watched the video yesterday, so let, let's move on to the positive side of Everton at the minute, which is that does look like there's a fairly imminent announcement regarding Dan Friedkin. Um, what's, what's your take on it? Well, after watching the video, I think it just cemented me thoughts that we spoke about on the video the other night, that out of all the people who we've seen we've been linked with, and the consortiums and the billionaires who are after Everton. And obviously, Mercedes now plumped for Dan Friedman. We spoke about it the other night, and I think we said it was probably the more we read about it and how he's grew into Roma and what he's done for that club. I think he was the sort of one who started to win me over. You know, first it was Bell and Down, and then, then we had... Um, Dell, the, the fella behind Dell was behind them. And then you'd heard of MSP still floating about and ACAP. And I think watching the video yesterday just summed it up for me that the thoughts I've had since we were linked with the Dan Friedman and what he brought to Roma. I think the journalist, the Italian journalist last night, probably put the nail on the head for me. I made my mind up of who I think is best to take Everton Football Club forward. And for me, it sounds like him. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say as well, 
people keep on talking about my uh, how I keep moving in videos. I bought this thing, right? And uh, it it literally so it's meant to be all robotic and do it all itself. It makes it's the worst thing I've ever bought in my life. It doesn't work. <laughs> It makes me spin around on the screen. It's doing everyone's editing, including mine. So I just wanted to explain. It's this, not me, whatever you can say. Um, yeah, I mean, he was incredibly positive. It, it looks like the future is definitely blue. I think the, the model that they went with was investing heavy into Roma at first. Um, it, it, in Roma's standard, that was 100 million euros. In Everton, it's going to be more. But... What he did is it, is it made them competitive. And then the plan is to, to essentially grow them slowly almost and redevelop younger players. And I, I think that's the model that Everton should absolutely go down. I think Everton do need some strength, depth and reinforcements. I think the sooner this this move happens, the better for us. Um, I, I'm really excited about it. I'm really, really excited about it. I think it's a, a good opportunity. I think this whole... You know, I mentioned it with Europe yesterday and I asked him, you know, what do you think could happen regarding ownership and playing each other in things like Europe if it happens, etc. And But I, I am of the opinion that the more of these sporting models happen, um, there's going to have to be dispensation from all these leagues to agree to some form of, of remedy. I think Aston Villa were unlucky. Um, they changed the rules for Manchester United and Manchester City this season. I suspect they probably would for Aston Villa now as well. Um, and I'd like to think that if Emerson do take on a team like, you know, or, or end up in the Champions League final against Roma, um, I'd like to think that the Premier League will be fine about it and will win the Champions League in the next, I don't know, four years. What was that? What was that computer thing, 2028, we're winning it? Yeah, I. Yeah, um, I think to be honest with you, I think when you when you mentioned that there about Man United and Man City got this special dispensation. Again, it depends who you are, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, it, it does depend who you are, where you get the, the decisions like that. Obviously, Aston Villa were unlucky not to get the decision to allow them to play a game against their, you know, their parent club or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, because they're not Man United and Man City, but as you quite rightly say, I think the way the, the football world's going now and as a model. These people who are starting to invest into football clubs, they want more and more and more. So they're not just buying one, they're buying two, three, and four. And seven, seven, seven are a perfect example, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Obviously, they've gone belly up. We know that. But there is still other groups of people out there who own more than one club. So they are going to start, you are going to have to start looking at it and saying, well, you know, we can't keep stopping these clubs playing against each other because. It takes the shine off the competition then, doesn't it? Because you could have an owner who owns two massive clubs, but yet they can't play against each other. So it takes the shine off it. Listen, we all love and we all hope that Everton will be playing in Champions League football in years to come. Going back to what you said about Dan Freakin and how he was with Roma when he came in, watching the video and listening to what he said, it reminds me of Everton, as in, the situation Roma were in when he first went there and the situation he will find himself in when he takes over Everton. I said on video the other night, it's not a quick fix, it won't happen overnight, but what he come in, he come in and he sorted, you know, the debts out and once he'd done that and he'd put them in the black and he spent uh, 100 million, as you said, initially, which he's going to have to spend a lot more to get Everton in the black on an even keel when he comes into the club. But it will be a slow process. But I think what you're seeing with Roma, he sorted that side out of it. And then he started looking at the management side and obviously he brought Mourinho in. And then he started looking at the playing side and he had Lukaku there and he brought Dabala in, Dybala, whatever his name is, and Tammy Abraham. So I think he gets the management structure sorted out first and then he gives them the opportunity to go to him and say, look, I want these players. And then they build, but they build slowly and they sort the debts out initially and they sort the club out. But then they don't really put you in a position where you have to worry about PSR again because they're throwing money around like a kid in a toy shop. They do it slowly, but they do it properly. And that, for me, is what sold it.
I love how he clicks the screen. He's like, Mike, you're on mute, mate. Um, there's a few more uh, links and information on the on the Roma press page, so make sure you go and have a read of that, guys, because they have done a piece on Dan Freaking by Everton following my video with them yesterday. A little shout out to Andy, by the way. How how good was he? How, how good was he? Um, yeah, he, he was fantastic. He, he was he put himself across well, and you know he took the time out to come onto the Blue Boys Network. And there was a lot of people in the comments who did notice that they were saying they were really happy that you got someone on like that because it sort of made their minds up now, and it's good to know what the future holds for Everton Football Club because we haven't been in that position for a couple of years. We don't know what each day is going to bring. But bringing someone in like that, he brings the right people in. He runs club pro clubs properly, sorts it out, and then he it sort of builds it gradually. And I think that's exactly the same. And that's what I said before. Everton are in the situation now. Roma were in when he went there. Going back to what you said about young players, and we want to bring young players through and stuff. The problem Everton have got at the minute is when we have young players at our disposal, because of the situation we're in financially, we have to sell them. Brantwaite's a perfect example. Yeah, and Anna will be a perfect example. Hopefully, in years to come, we won't have to be in that position because hopefully we'll be challenging for the top end of the league. Not saying we're going to win it, but challenging for Europe, getting to semi-finals in cups, getting to cup finals. So these players might be happy at Everton because they can see progress. Whereas at the minute, Brantwaite's not pushing for a move, but I don't blame him if he wants to go because what we spoke about the other night is probably better. Not better clubs out there, wrong choice of words. Clubs who were going to win something before Man United, that if they come in for them, you probably have a better chance of winning silverware yeah. in the next two or three years. Yeah. Let's hope this group of people coming in, or Dan coming in, Dan Freakman coming in, will stop us having to sell these talents that we, you know, we, we buy from Carlisle, for example, in Branthwaite, I think it was. Um, and Give them something to stay for. Show them that the club's progressing. Show them that they will have a chance of hopefully silverware at Everton because we mm. haven't got at the minute. But it's about the model and it's about the commercial side and bringing the right people in, you know, getting things right off the pitch, but also getting things right on it as well. Yeah. Um, some more details about the deal is sort of come out again as, as I mentioned earlier on the Roma press page and it looks like it's a deal between 400 to 600 million with Mishiri and it also looks like it's um, it also looks like it's paying off the debts 400 million pounds 500 million pound paying off the debts um, I suspect some of it will end up being restructured we've had some of these debts for a long long time you know right to media have been in various different guises for probably twenty odd years in, in different in different amounts of money. So um it, it's gonna be a good start, I think. It's gonna be a, a new start for Everton. Um he he will want Everton competing at the top. He he absolutely will. There's no point buying a club like Everton for them to languish mid table. So it is going to be exciting. Um, we just need the official announcement for the exclusivity deal to be put in place. The deal is fundamentally agreed. Um, there was rumours that somebody may be trying very, very last minute to increase their bid. I don't know if that's true or not. So we'll see. And then the other thing I just wanted to mention, John, um, just on, on this situation, is it also means that things like the stadium, the, there's potential for things like you know naming rights or people that he knows and groups that he knows so commercially this could be a really good deal for everton as well plus he's quite a charismatic character you know he's a pilot he, you know when he went into roma as i alluded to yesterday he piloted a private jet himself with Dybala and Lukaku on it. I mean, how amazing is that? And you you made a joke yesterday, and I'm not going to take it away from you, but what did you say that you'd want to say? He'll have a water plane landing in the River Mersey on a match day, just putting it there right next to the new stadium, and he'll be <laughs> flying it himself. <laughs> um, John, it, it's, it, it only seems right that we mention England. We are playing today in terms of the Euros. I know me and you aren't massively bothered, but um, it should be an England win, shouldn't it, today? 
Yeah, I mean, it should be. Listen, England should have won trophies under South Gareth South, South, Southgate in the time he's been there. The attacking players England are for some of the best in the world. It's him. The problem's him. Yeah, and I can't believe he's been there that long. I don't see. I, I don't see England winning it. I know. I think they're one of the favourites, if not the favourites. England don't bother me. Now, shoot me down in the comments. I'd rather watch paint dry, to be fair. Um, but with that group of players, Michael, and that squad of players, he's got forward players. Because if you want to talk about taking Lewis Dunk over Jarrett Branthwaite and Tarkovsky, we can again. I mean, some of the, the decisions he's made squad-wise and the one that he's settled with, the 26 players he's settled with, for me, leaves a lot to be desired. Sending Jack Realish home. You know, he's a game changer, Jack Grealish. If you need someone to come on, change the game or keep the ball, he can do both, Jack Grealish. I think that at Southgate has listened to a lot of England fans, not me. And thought, right, you know what? You've asked for it. I'll do it. I'll make these changes. I actually think it's going to backfire on him, and I don't think England get past the quarterfinals, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, yeah, he might be the new Man United manager in... Six months' time, if Tan Hag is not there, or whatever happens. So, cool. Right, John, I shall leave you to the rest of your day, sir. Thank you for hopping on the video, as always. Um, I haven't got anything else to add. There's nothing else massively, um, obviously, news-wise breaking. Um, and as we said earlier, right at the start of the video, thoughts are with Kevin Campbell at the end of the day. Um, and it's uh, not even getting, you know, his family and friends. It's just horrible. Um, yeah. Have a good holiday, my friends. Cheers. And, uh, yeah, we will see you when you get back. Well, I'll try and get on while I can, while she is getting ready. Al, if you want to do a quick 10, 15 minute video, if there's anything to talk about, I'll be more than welcome to come on with a beer in my hand. Yeah, and, and I suppose more importantly, if, if she is getting ready, we can get her on as well. Brilliant. <laughs> Cheers, right. people. See you later.